Raypack, part of the Ream family of companies. As a reminder to all of our participants, the instruction provided in this training is intended for qualified and experienced professionals. If you are not qualified, please do not attempt to apply these instructions on your own. This is another presentation of Raypack's Boiler Bite-Sized Bits. Welcome to a Boiler Bite-Sized Bit. In this module, we will discuss mode selection as determined by piping layout for the high delta H-type boilers. We will also touch on piping layouts for high delta WH-type and pool also. In ordering a high delta boiler, you can order it as a hydronic heater or H-type, a water heater or WH-type, or a pool heater or P-type. The ID card inside the unit indicates what kind of a boiler it, it is. In ordering a hydronic heater, there are three possible ways to set it up. These are called modes and are effectively operating programs for the boiler. If the appliance has a water heater ID card, then it is a water heater and there is only one mode of operation. Same if the appliance was purchased as a pool heater. There is only one mode of operation there as well. This is a summary table for the hydronic type boilers. There are three modes to choose from, mode 1, 2, and 3. All must be plumbed primary and secondary as the high delta boilers are low mass. All three modes can be applied to single or multiple boilers, and all can run with or without outdoor reset. The difference lies in the presence or absence of an indirect hot water system. If there is no indirect, then it is in mode 1. This is the most common configuration. If there is an indirect system present on the system loop, then it's in mode 2. If the indirect is present on the boiler loop, then it is in mode 3. Mode 2 can be ran with or without priority, while mode 3 is always with priority. First, we will present mode 1 with primary secondary plumbing. This is by far the most common configuration on a hydronic boiler. Here is a drawing for a mode 1 primary secondary system with a single boiler. It's primary secondary because there are two loops, the boiler loop and the system loop. And that's how you should refer to them, the boiler loop and the system loop, not the primary loop and the secondary loop. What you are calling the primary loop might be different from that which the person you are speaking to thinks is the primary loop. The place where the two loops overlap is called the decoupler. The decoupler is the magic of a primary secondary system. When built properly, this will allow the bigger system pump to run when the boiler is not running without forcing water through the boiler. This is a mode one cascade system. Boiler A on the left is the master boiler and boilers B, C, and D are the followers. All of the same decoupler concepts apply, only now they apply to the whole cascade. An important part of plumbing boilers in cascade is to use reverse return logic. The first boiler out to the loop is the last boiler to receive water back from the loop. So what makes a mode 1 primary secondary a mode 1? It's not what's there, but what's not there. There's no indirect domestic hot water system present. It's just a straight up hydronic heater. Moving on to mode two discussion. What makes a mode two a mode two is the presence of an indirect potable water system on the system loop. In mode two, primary, secondary, you still have the two loops, the boiler loop and the system loop. The decoupler is still there to pressure isolate the two loops. What makes this a mode 2 is the addition of an indirect domestic hot water heat exchanger tank on the system loop. A more detailed explanation of how a mode 2 system works can be found on the High Delta Part 2 Wages Approach video. Mode 2 is also possible in Cascade. As with the single boiler system, the indirect domestic hot water tank is out on the system loop. When in Cascade, there can be only one master boiler, the A boiler here. The other boilers are the follower boilers. Always apply reverse return logic to plumbing cascade systems. 
that the first boiler out to the system is the last in line on the return. So what makes a mode 2 primary secondary a mode 2? You have an indirect domestic hot water system on the system loop. Now moving on to the mode 3 discussion. In mode 3, the indirect domestic hot water is on the boiler loop. Mode 3 systems are always ran with priority. This is a mode 3 primary secondary single boiler system. The same plumbing is applied here. You have a boiler loop and a system loop. The indirect domestic hot water heat exchanger is on the boiler loop in this case. Mode 3 can also be ran in cascade. Here the A boiler is the master boiler and the others are followers. Being a multiple boiler cascade system, reverse return plumbing logic applies. It is, it is a mode 3 because the indirect domestic hot water system is on the boiler loop. So what makes a mode 3 a mode 3? It must be plumbed primary or secondary and it must have an indirect domestic hot water system on the boiler loop. Here are some overall pointers on plumbing systems and how they relate to mode selection for type H boilers. Identify all of the parts of the system. Look for what is there as well as what is not there. Make sure it is plumbed primary secondary. In most cases, with no indirect domestic hot water present, mode 1 will be your choice. If you do have an indirect domestic hot water present on the system loop, then it's a mode 2. If the indirect domestic hot water is present on the boiler loop, then it's a mode 3. Moving on from hydronic and into WH type appliances, as in water heaters. When a high delta is purchased to be a water heater, there is only one mode of operation, so the plumbing is more specific. Here is a drawing for a water heater application. Important notes. City cold water always comes in on the outlet side of the boiler to be mixed with the hot water the boiler is producing on the way to the tank. Introducing the city cold water on the inlet side of the boiler will likely lead to going below the required minimum inlet temperature of 105 degrees Fahrenheit, resulting in condensing in the boiler. Here the tank works like a decoupler and the S3 system sensor is placed in a dry well in the tank. As with the water heater type, if it is a pool heater, there is only one mode of operation. Here the decoupler is the distance between the supply and the return of the recirculation loop. Here the two upper valves are there to isolate the heater for service, while the two lower valves are there for temperature regulation. That concludes another Boiler Bite Size Bit. Look for more Boiler Bite Size Bits from Raypack. Raypack, engineered to perform, built to last. Raypack, part of the Ream family of companies. As a reminder to all of our participants, the instruction provided in this training is intended for qualified and experienced professionals. If you are not qualified, Please do not attempt to apply these instructions on your own. This is another presentation of Raypack's Boiler Bite Sized Bits. Welcome to another Boiler Bite Sized Bit. In this module, we will discuss mode selection and some basic plumbing for the X-Fire boilers. When ordering a hydronic heater, there are three possible ways to set it up. These are called modes and are effectively operating programs for the boiler. If the appliance has a water heater ID card, then it is a water heater and there is only one mode of operation. This is a summary table for the hydronic type boilers. There are th three modes to choose from, mode one, two, and three. All must be plumbed primary or secondary as the X-Fire boilers are low mass. All three modes can be applied to single or multiple boilers, and all can run with or without outdoor reset. The difference lies in the presence or absence of an indirect hot water system. 
If there is no indirect, then it is in mode 1. This is the most common configuration. If there is an indirect system present on the system loop, then it is in mode 2. If the indirect is present on the boiler loop, then it's in mode 3. Mode 2 can be ran with or without priority, while mode 3 is always with priority. First, we will present mode 1. Primary secondary plumbing is required. This is the most common configuration with hydronic type boilers. Here is a drawing for mode 1, primary secondary with a single boiler. It's primary secondary because there are two loops, the boiler loop and the system loop. The place where the two loops overlap is the decoupler. It is in mode 1 because of what is not here. There is no indirect domestic hot water system present. Mode 1 can also be ran in a cascade system. Here, boiler A on the left is the master boiler, and boilers B, C, and D are the followers. There is one decoupler for the system, and it supports the entire cascade. An important part of plumbing boilers in cascade is to use reverse return logic. The first boiler out to the loop is the last boiler to receive water back from the loop. So what makes a mode one primary secondary a mode one? It's not what's there, but what's not there. There's no indirect domestic hot water system present. It's just a straight up hydronic heater. Next, we will present mode 2 for the X-Fire. Primary secondary plumbing is required as before. The key thing that makes it a mode 2 is the indirect domestic hot water on the system loop. In mode 2, primary secondary, you still have the two loops, the boiler loop and the system loop. The decoupler is still there to pressure isolate the two loops. What makes this a mode 2 is the addition of an indirect domestic hot water heat exchanger tank on the system loop. Mode 2 is also possible in cascade. As with the single boiler system, the indirect domestic hot water tank is out on the system loop. When in cascade, there can be only one master boiler, the A boiler here. The other boilers are the follower boilers. Always apply reverse return logic to plumbing cascade systems. The first boiler to supply water to the system is the last on the return line from the system. So what makes a mode 2 primary secondary a mode 2? You have an indirect domestic hot water tank out on the system loop. Last for the hydronic modes, we have mode 3 for primary secondary systems. The key thing that makes this a mode 3 is the indirect domestic hot water on the boiler loop. Mode 3 is always with priority. This is a mode 3 primary secondary single boiler system. The same plumbing is applied here. You have a boiler loop and you have a system loop. The decoupler is built in the same way to pressure isolate the two loops. The indirect domestic hot water heat exchanger is on the boiler loop in this case. Mode 3 can also be ran in cascade. Here the A boiler is the master boiler and the others are followers. The decoupler supports the whole cascade here. As with all boiler cascade systems, reverse return plumbing logic applies. It's a mode 3 because the indirect domestic hot water tank is out on the boiler loop. So what makes a mode 3 a mode 3? It must be plumbed primary secondary and it must have an indirect domestic hot water system on the boiler loop. Here are some overall pointers on plumbing systems and how they relate to mode selection for type H boilers. Identify all of the parts of the system. Look for what is there as well as what is not there. Make sure it is plumbed primary secondary. In most cases, with no indirect domestic hot water present, mode one will be your choice. If you do have an indirect domestic hot water tank present on the system loop, then it's a mode two. If the indirect domestic hot water is present on the boiler loop, then it's a mode three. Moving on from hydronic and into WH appliances, 
as in water heaters. With the next fire, purchased to be a water heater, there is only one mode of operation, so the plumbing is more specific. Here is a drawing for a water heater application. Important notes. City cold water always comes in on the outlet side of the boiler to be mixed with the hot water the boiler is producing on the way to the tank. Here the tank works like the decoupler and the S3 sensor is placed in a dry well in the tank. That wraps up another boiler bite size bit. Look for more boiler bite size bits from Raypack. Raypack, engineered to perform, built to last.